here we've got a y equals cos x trigonometric function but we've got a two here and a three here so today is all about what happens when those numbers are in there what changes so what this means is we've got two times and then we're doing when we put our input angle in for example if x is pi over two we do pi over two times three and then we cause that result so you could imagine brackets are in there as well first thing we're going to do is determine the amplitude a and the period t so we figured out that cos and sine are wave shapes and the a value is like how high from zero does it get or how low from zero does it get and the amplitude is this number at the front here that's a okay so you can see it there if you've got y equals a sine bx or y equals a cos bx a is the number at the front here so last time we did it sine and cosine went up to one and they went down to minus one right and we had nothing at the front which means that there was a one there this time a is two and since amplitude is a length if you want to be 100 percent correct you can say a is two units the amplitude is a units what is t t is the period so the period is, remember, how often does one full cycle uh, go? Like how much horizontal space does one full cycle take up? And for the sine and cosine function last time, just the standard ones, it was 2 pi, wasn't it? But the period, t, is 2 pi divided by the b value. And what's b? b is this number here. So in other words, this is b, right? So b is this number that's stuck to the x. Now our period is going to be 2 pi divided by that. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by b, which is 3 units. Now what we're going to do is graph this sucker knowing that information. What we're going to do is just plot a few points and use what we know about the shape of cosine. So for example, why don't we just do x equals 0? When x is 0, y equals, and you just put it in there, 2 cos 3 times x, which is 0, which is 2 times cos 0. Now this goes back to all we've learned before. What's cos zero? Cos zero, sine zero. Uh, you could draw your little um, quadrantal angles grid again. Cos zero is one. Okay, so this gives us a point, zero two. Okay, so it's gonna go through there. That's gonna be one of the points. Now we know our period, right? We know our period already is two pi over three. So I'm gonna say this is zero, Four quadrants, one, two, three, four. That's going to be one full period. So I'm going to make this two pi over three. And that's one period later. So where is the curve going to be there? One period later, it's going to be up here again. And there we go. Okay, pretty handy. Got two points already. We just did one calculation. Now let's fill in the rest here. Uh, let's fill in these numbers. How are we going to do that? Just use what you know about fractions and dividing. So we've got two pi over three. What's half of that? Two pi over three times a half. Twos cancel when we just get pi over three. Uh huh. So pi over three. And what's half of that? What's half of pi over three? Pi over six. Hopefully you figured that out. And then we're going to fill in the blanks. So what we're doing here is we're going to be going up in multiples of pi over six. So this is pi over six. Two pi over six simplifies to pi over three, right? Yes, that makes sense. So pi over six, two pi over six. This is three pi over six. Oh, does that simplify? Yes. This is actually pi over two. Pi over six. 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, and 4 pi over 6, which simplifies to 2 pi over 3. Makes sense? You've got to write simplified fractions, unfortunately. And the negative, okay, these just mirror over here. So this is going to be negative pi over 6, and then negative pi over 3. Now, how we do the rest? We could just go ahead and graph this. It's going to go here, down to here, back up to here. But let's just make sure that everything agrees. We need a couple more points. So when x is pi over 3, where would we suspect it's going to be? I think it's going to go from here through here, down to here. Let's put in x as pi over three. y equals two times cos three times x, and x is pi over three. Equals two times cos, threes cancel. We get cos pi, negative one, okay? Remember, cos is always the x coordinate, okay? So you go around your uh, unit circle, when you've got the theta is 180 or pi, and you get minus one. Minus 2. So this gives us a point. Pi over 3, negative 2. Does that agree? Pi over 3? Yes, it does. And guess what? Using period. One full period. One, two, three, four quadrants. Going back, it's going to also go through there. So obviously we're going to have this wave shape again. So down, up, down, up. 
Okay, and I'm just still not quite convinced. Is this going to go through zero? Well, let's try it. X equals negative pi on 6. 2 times cos 3x. And x is negative pi on 6. 2 times cos. Cancel, cancel. 2. This becomes negative pi on 2. 2 times. What is cos of negative pi on 2? Well, you might do your um, unit circle again. Where If theta is pi over 2, if theta is negative pi over 2, that means it's down here. And what are the coordinates at that point? 0 negative 1. And remember, cosine is always the x-coordinate, so this is going to be 0, which is 0, which gives us the point negative pi and 6, 0. And that's what we thought would happen. goes through there. And using period, okay, all four coordinates later, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's also going to go through 0. So it's going to go from here, cut through there, up to 2. If x equals pi over 6, you should get 0 there as well. Go down here and up there. So Knowing all that, let us now graph this, okay? So a nice smooth line. Remember, it doesn't cross vertically. It just crosses at a nice angle. Just do your best with it, like so. And at the ends, it doesn't keep going down, right? It keeps going as if it's going to follow that wave pattern. So let's just put some arrows because that's going to keep going. Keep going. Remember, it doesn't go up there. It comes back down to continue that pattern. And why don't we put the equation in here as well? Y equals 2 cos 3x. Check this out. See? Determine the coordinates of P where P is 5 pi over 12 and show it. So in other words, P is the point 5 pi on 12 something and it's on this cosine function. Well, all we're going to do is just the same stuff we've been doing here. Let's put in X equals 5 pi over 12 into the equation. Y equals 2 times cos 3 times X and X is 5 pi on 12. And let's do this, 2 times cos, does this simplify? Yes, it does. 3, 12 simplifies to 4, and we get cos 5 pi over 4. What's that? 5 pi over 4, ooh, where is that? So we're going to do an A, S, T, C for angles larger than 90. Pi on 4 is 45 degree jumps, and we've got five of them. So pi on 4, 2 pi on 4, 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, so that is... Our theta here, 5.4. What is our acute reference angle? Theta dash is pi and 4. And don't forget the 2 is still there, so it's 2 times what's cos 5 pi and 4? It is cos pi on 4. And only tan is positive in that quadrant, so it's negative. So what is that? 2 times and negative. What's cos pi and 4? Cos pi and 4 is root 2 over 2. Aha, uh -huh. 2's cancel and we end up with negative root 2. So P has coordinates, 5 pi and 12, negative root 2. By the way, root 2, how big is that? Uh, maybe you know it off the top of your head, it's about 1.4142 something something. So let's see, this should fit nicely on it. 5 pi and 12, oh, there's a problem. Where's 5 pi and 12? That's the next problem we've got to figure out. Where's pi on 6? So this is pi and 6, so where's pi and 12 going to be? It's going to be halved that. Okay, so if we halve all these increments here, each of these is a multiple of pi over 12. So here we go. We want 5 pi over 12. This is pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12 is here. And our point P is going to be the point on the curve with that x coordinate. So if we come down here, that's our point P. And where is that? Negative radical 2. Does that look about right? If negative radical 2 is negative 1.414, does that look about right? Yeah, it's between negative 1 and negative 2, closer to negative 1. Looking good. 